Coin Op. Hey everyone, this is Dustin, and today Coin Op presents How to Find Coins Worth Good Money in Pocket Change. So if you were asking yourself, how can coins be worth more money than face value? Well, that's simple. Mint errors and die varieties. Let me explain. An error coin is a coin that was manufactured incorrectly by the mint. Many times called mint errors, error coins come in scores of shapes, sizes, and types. The sheer variety of minted errors adds excitement and uniqueness in collecting them. There are many, many, many different types of various mint errors. Uh, in this video, I will show you examples of some of the ones you'll most likely encounter over the years, coin searching, some of the more common ones. Um, but they will be later on in the video. Die variety is any variation in the normal design of a given coin, usually caused by errors in the preparation or maintenance of the coin dies. Typical die varieties include double dies, repunched mint marks, and dates, variations in the placement or alignment of mint marks, letters and numbers, devices, etc. Changes to the die surfaces from overpolishing or die clashes, and a number of, of other minor variations in the final strike of the coin. There are many different types of die varieties. In this video, I will be showing you a lot of the more major and popular varieties, the more valuable ones, such as double dies, uh, things along those lines. But that will be a little bit later on in the video as well. So before we get into what to actually look for, let's go over the basics of how to coin search. Is, um, that's kind of important. So first, you're going to want to find a quiet, comfortable place. Um, I personally like kicking back on my lazy boy with a tray in front of me that I like to use. But of course, you will find whatever it is that you enjoy and you find comfortable. You're going to want to keep everything organized. Uh, organization is key. So when you're looking through your change, you want to separate it by denomination. Uh, a lot of people like to separate separate it by date. Uh, some of them will put, put a container for 1980s, container for 1990s, container for 2000s, container for 2010s and to current. That way, everything is just in one place, and you can literally search it by each particular date. We're going to move on to magnification. You're going to need magnification while coin searching. There are a lot of die varieties that you cannot see just by glancing at the coin. Now, there are some double dies that are very strong, and you can see it with the naked eye. But most of the time, with like something such as a double die, you're not going to be able to see it with the naked eye. You are going to want to use magnification. Um, anything from a jeweler's loop, which is recommended, to a magnifying glass, all the way to a USB coin microscope. Um, now with a jeweler's loop, that is the most common thing used in coin searching. They're very, very easy to use. Uh, jeweler's loop, you want a 10 times magnification at least, at least a 10 times magnification. If you decide to go with a magnifying glass, make sure you also get a strong magnifying glass at 10 times power if possible. Now USB coin microscopes, they typically are like 60 times power or something like that, so they will definitely work, but be prepared to spend a little bit of money. Jewelers loops and magnifying glasses, you can purchase them for just a few dollars. They're not very expensive at all. Um, they're readily available. Magnifying glasses, clearly you can buy at lots of various stores. Uh, so you can purchase those locally. A jeweler's loop, on the other hand, um, either order one online, you can buy them on eBay or Amazon for just a few dollars. They're, they're very inexpensive. Or you could find a local coin dealer or a jewelry store, a jeweler, and uh, see if they have one for purchase. I do know most coin dealers do sell coin supplies, um, and that is a coin supply. So they would definitely have jewelers loops for sale. Um, there are jewelry stores that do sell them as well. It's just they're pretty hard to find. So your best bet is going to be through a coin dealer or to order one online. Now for a USB microscope, 
There are some coin dealers that do sell them. Uh, I have seen that a couple times now. And I commend those coin dealers. That's awesome. I love USB coin microscopes. Um, a lot of the photos that you see in uh, my videos are taken using a USB coin microscope. Um, so you could take very nice, close-up, big, blown-up photos with them. You can see every little detail of a coin. They are not that difficult to use. So if you have a little bit of computer experience and you want to mess around with a USB coin microscope, I definitely would recommend it. But at least get yourself either a magnifying glass or a jeweler's loop. So you're going to want to keep everything organized, a nice, quiet, comfortable place, and a magnifying glass. Now when you are handling coins, um, a lot of people who are not experienced coin collectors tend to handle coins pretty rough. Um, in the coin world, it is recommended to hold the coins by the rim of the coin, basically between your first finger and your thumb. So I do recommend getting in the habit of properly handling coins. I do have a little diagram showing you how to properly handle a coin. So just so that you know that way when you're out and about, if you're handling somebody else's coins, you don't offend them. Or uh, when you're taking photos of coins, uh, there are a lot of coin, coin collectors that will not purchase a coin that somebody takes a photo of that's just laying flat in their hand. They want to see you actually holding it correctly. One of the things that I have found over the years is that a lot of new collectors seem to think that coins should be nice, clean, sparkly, and shiny. That is very, 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 very wrong. Do not clean your coins. If you were wondering whether or not to clean a coin, just don't do it. I cannot stress this enough. Don't do it. When you clean a coin, you take off the top layer of the coin. It damages the coin. It destroys the value. A uh, experienced collector can spot a cleaned coin uh, compared to a coin that's all original. We don't want cleaned coins. If you clean your coin, you literally destroy the value of it. If you feel your coin is exceptionally dirty, if you want to, maybe a little bit of warm soapy water and a cotton swab. Other than that, just do not clean your coins. Please don't clean them. Leave that up to somebody who is an expert and knows what the hell they're doing because cleaning coins can destroy them very fast. Don't do it. So while you're out coin searching, if you do happen to stumble across a rare variety or a silver coin or something that's just worth more money than regular face value on that coin, then it is a good idea to store the coin in proper storage. Proper storage could be anything from a two by two cardboard uh, holder that gets stapled together, which is very common. You can buy them from any local dealer or order them online. They're very inexpensive. Could be a Mylar flip for temporary storage. Don't store them in these long term. Or even into coin books or uh, coin album books. Any of these will definitely help keep your coin in a very nice state condition. While coin searching. Um, now when you are coin searching, um, separate the silver from the copper. In other words, what I mean is the silver colored coins. Now, do keep in mind that dimes, 1964 and earlier, quarters, 1964 and earlier, and Kennedy half dollars, 1964 and earlier, are 90% silver. Nickels minted between 1942 and 1945 are 40% silver and half dollars minted between 1965 and 1970 are also 40 percent silver so those silver coins are worth a lot more than face value make sure you immediately pull them aside
will move on to varieties. Now with the varieties, I do have six varieties for you. Um, the first one is a 1946. There are many varieties, just so you know, in the Roosevelt Dime series. I am going to do a nice video segment with a bunch of them. But uh, the first one I, I picked because I just think it's a really, really neat variety. It's a 1946 S over S over S over S plus double die reverse. So the mint mark was repunched on this one multiple times plus it's double died reverse um, so to me this is just really cool variety just because it's you know, basically two varieties in one uh, it's listed as a DDR 001 and RPM 001 or FS 501 Next variety I'm going to show you is a 1950 S over inverted S. It's listed as an FS501 or RPM005. Um, this one, the S mint mark was punched over top of an inverted or sideways S mint mark. Now, some people do believe this to be punched over top of a D mint mark. So there is a little bit of debate on this variety, but so far it's listed as an S over S. Next up, you are looking at a 1964 D, a 1964 Denver Mint, double die reverse DDR, uh, listed as DDR FS801 or DDR-001, whichever you wish to choose. Uh, doubling is evident pretty much all over the reverse design. Okay, here you are looking at a 1966 SMS uh, dime. Uh, SMS is Special Mint Series. Um, 1966, the mint put out a Special Mint Series. Um, this is a dime that a couple of them have been located. Robert Lawson, who you know, is a partner of mine on this channel, he provides me a large majority of my images that I use, is actually the discoverer of this uh, particular variety. I do believe that there's still one of these actually up for sale on eBay, but uh, if you look at it, you can see it has a 5 printed on the cheek of uh, Roosevelt. It's actually the, the 5 from the 1965 SMS series. So there's a really neat variety for you. It's a new discovery, so, well, relatively newer discovery, so you can uh, potentially cherry pick this one. Next up, we have a 1969 with the reverse of a 1968 and a 1970 with the reverse of 1968. Uh, this reverse die was actually intended to be used on proof coins and was not routinely used until 1971 through 1980. Um, what the variety is, is the flame actually displays two grooves that give the torch uh, much more of a sense of depth. Is it more of a design makes it look a little bit better. And last variety that I'm going to show you in uh, this first segment 
is the 1982 no pee variety um the 1980s all of them well all the way up till today all of them have mint marks whether it's philadelphia denver um san francisco or 1996 um, west point they will all have a mint mark
looking at the difference between a true double die and either mechanical doubling or, or strike doubling, whichever you want to call it, and also the difference between a true double die and die deterioration. Both uh, mechanical doubling and de die deterioration people commonly mistake as a true double die and it is not. A lot of new collectors when they're out searching they'll stumble across one and they think it's a double die. It's not. Both of them are very very common. Both die deterioration and uh, strike doubling or mechanical doubling are very common. There's no added uh, extra premium or value. Um, so currently we are looking at a true double die. What we are looking at right now is a 1936 double die adverse. Now this is a type 1. This is DDO-001. This is the most sought after out of the 1936 double dies. Um, this one is actually one of Robert Lawson's 1936's. He has a whole bunch of them. I do believe this one he does have for sale on eBay so I will put a link down in the comment section to it. But while you're looking at it, you will see that I did put arrows to highlight where to look for line separation and split serifs. Now the 1936 double die is not as strong as like a 1955 double die verse or the 1969 S double die or the 1972 double die uh, type 1 double die, but it is strong enough that it has clear line separation. So I figured this was a very good one to use because if uh, you were to be looking at it, you know, this one you might just miss unless you're, you're looking with magnification. So this was, a, I thought, a good one. Good one to use as an example. Now we are looking at what is known as strike doubling or mechanical doubling. Strike doubling or mechanical doubling is not a double die. This is very common. It occurs on every denomination of coin. Um, what causes it is a shift when it's being struck. It shifts inside of its retaining collar, which causes the metal to cause this little look. Now when you're looking at it, there will not be split serifs. What that means is uh, at the end of the letters or the numbers, there'd be a split. Well, on a true double die, there'd be a split. On mechanical doubling or strike doubling, there is no split. Also, when you're looking at it, it'll be real flat and like stretched out looking. It'll be shelf-like. It will not be the same size as the rest of the devices. It'll be flattened. Now, this is not a double die. Here we are looking at the side-by-side. -side. This is a 1968 um, that has strike doubling or mechanical doubling. Now you're looking at a 1936 true double die. So you can see the side-by-side -side comparison of the two. Now what we are looking at is what is called die deterioration. This occurs from an overworked die. It is very, very common. What it does is it gives it kind of a ghost doubling appearance. If you look, you know, the, the letters look like they have a shadowed or doubled image. This is not a double die. This is what's called die deterioration. It's from an overworked die. Um, it occurs, once again, on all denominations of coin. And uh, actually, if you find it, you find it quite, quite easily on 2015 and 2016 dimes. But uh, you'll see this on all different kinds of coins. Um, this is what the poor man's uh, double die is, the 1955 poor man's double die. That's all it is, is die deterioration. Another common date would be the 1953 uh, Lincoln cent. For whatever reason, you'll see it a lot on there too. But this is not a true double die. Here we have a side-by-side -side comparison so that you can see die deterioration versus a true double die. Well, there you 
you go. While you're out doing your coin searching, if you stumble across any of these, now you know what they are. They are not double dies. They are either strike doubling, mechanical doubling, or just die deterioration. But once again, if you have questions or you're unsure, feel free to ask. Um, I do make my email address available to anyone. We do have our website, which is varietyerrors.com. Uh, you can always ask questions there as well. You can easily determine value of error and variety coins by utilizing such auction houses such as eBay or Heritage Coin Auctions. If you were to go to eBay, check past auction results, type in the coin, look at what it has sold for. Same with Heritage, you can look at past auction results. And it's a great way to determine fair market value of the current value of your coin. So let's say you're looking through your coin collection or you just finished searching a nice large jar of change. And uh, let's say you happen to have found something really nice like a 1995 double die. Um, so where do you take it to sell it? Well, that's a good question. And here are some solid suggestions to help you on your path to cash with your coin finds. First, if the coin you wish to sell is valuable enough, I strongly recommend that uh, you, you submit it to a third-party grading company. Um, PCGS, Annex, or NGC are the companies that I personally would recommend. Um, I will post links to their websites uh, in the comments down below. Now, PCGS and NGC will cost you around $36 a coin to have it graded certified and you will also need to be a member. I know it sounds like a lot of money and I know it sounds like you got to jump through hoops, but I want you to keep in mind that when you sign up for membership, uh, with your membership fees, you get free coin submissions and it pretty much washes out. So reality is, is it really doesn't cost you all that much. Now, Annex, on the other hand, you do not need to be a member and it costs around $15 a coin. Um, for error and variety coins, NGC and Annex are both excellent companies when uh, dealing with error and variety coins. They do a very good job at uh, attributing them. Now, once your coin is graded and certified, it will eliminate any questions of what the coin is. Um, and it, you'll usually fetch more with it in a third-party graded uh, uh, holder. So if it says PCGS and it's in a nice plastic holder, typically dealers um, or people online will pay you more money for it. Um, now let's say, for example, your coin is not really worth enough to constitute it being graded. Take, for instance, a 1995 Double Diverse. Unless it's a really nice high MS, it's not really worth in my opinion, the cost of having it graded. So, what do you do then? Well, then I strongly recommend you put it in something like a 2x2 two two coin flip or just something to keep it nice and uh, out of the elements. Keep it safe. Now, you can purchase things like 2x2 two two flips at places like your, your local dealer, for one. Definitely will sell them. They'll have lots of them. Um, they're not expensive either. Or you could even buy them from places like wizardcoinsupply.com. I will play, uh, we'll post a link in the comments. Um, now, obviously, you can clearly take your coin to a local dealer. Now, if you do bring your coin to a local dealer to sell, please do keep in mind that the dealers have to turn a pop profit, so they are not going to pay you full-on retail value for it. They have bills to pay. They are in there to make a profit. So if you look online and it says that your coin is currently selling for $60 and you bring it to a dealer, don't be offended when the dealer offers you 30 bucks. The dealer has to keep make a profit. He or she will definitely not offer you full-on retail value. It is going to be much lower than retail value. So keep that in mind. Now also, a couple times a year, there's usually a coin show either in your area or somewhere around your area. Somewhere that's not too far of a drive. Uh, to find where coin shows are, you could obviously look online. Um, lots of different places will list where coin shows are. Or you could always just ask a local dealer and find out where they are. Now, coin shows are a great place to shop around a coin because there will be multiple dealers with lots of tables and everybody in that room is literally there to buy and sell coins. 
so you can literally go from table to table to table and find the best offer and sell it directly. Now, if you decide you want to auction your coin, well, you can always list it on eBay. eBay is an excellent place to sell coins. Um, if you do decide to post it to eBay, make sure you take very clear, good photos of your coin. Um, when you're writing a description, write every little thing about the coin. If it has a scratch on the coin, make sure you put that in the description. Um, if you don't and somebody buys it, a lot of times they'll send it back like, oh, I didn't realize it was scratched. You want to leave out any room for anybody to do any of that kind of stuff. So describe everything about the coin. Um, now, if you don't want to do all that work, you could always uh, co-sign your coin to uh, Heritage Coin Auctions. Now, Heritage Coin Auctions is one of the largest coin auction houses in the world. That is also the same place where the high dollar coins sell, the ones that sell for multi-millions of dollars, like uh, the rare 1913 V nickel. Um, they've, they've sold a lot of ridiculously high-end coins. They're a great company to work with. Just the only thing, if you do consign a coin to Heritage Coin Auctions, it will need to be graded by a third-party coin grading company. So once again, you will want it in a PCGS, Annex, or NGC holder. Um, now, if you want to sell your coins directly, you can easily list it on one of the many Facebook coin groups. Uh, there are a lot of them on Facebook that you can sell in. Um, you can also sell it locally through places such as Craigslist, OfferUp, and LetGo. Now, if you do decide to sell it on Facebook, once again, make sure you take very, very good fo uh, photos. Um, whatever coin group you're selling it in, go read their pin post, see what their rules are to selling, and make sure you follow them to the T. Please do this. A lot of people in the coin groups, I've seen it over the years, will just not follow a really basic rule. So, uh, like the rules are, when you take a photo of the coin, you're supposed to write your name down on a piece of paper with the day's date next to the coin so people really know that it's you holding that coin and not some stock photo somebody downloaded from the computer now with craigslist offer up and let go that you'd be selling directly and locally in your area if you were to do that and go that route um, make sure when you're meeting up with people i don't ever have them come to my house um, i just don't want people who i don't know buying coins from me to come directly to my house. I typically will have them meet me someplace public, like a McDonald's or Walmart. Um, if it's a higher dollar coin, I have them meet me at my bank. Believe it or not, your local bank will allow you to conduct higher dollar coin sales in their lobby or in one of their offices. They do that so that you feel secure. So there are some ideas and some suggestions for you. There are a lot of other ways to sell coins as well. So be creative if you want to. Now do keep in mind that most areas do have local coin clubs. Um, if you are not sure if there's a local coin club in your area, you can always ask a local dealer. Uh, one of your local coin dealers should have information about coin clubs. You can also look online for coin clubs in your area. Now they are great places to meet like-minded people just like yourself. If one does not exist in your area, start one. It's not as hard as you think, and a lot of people are interested in it. Actually, a lot more people than you probably would imagine are interested in it. Well, here at CoinOp, we seriously hope you enjoyed that video. We hope you can put a lot of that information to good use and help you along your path and journey of coin searching and hopefully you can find some valuable coins in everyday pocket change worth much more than face value um, did try to make this video encompass a whole lot all in one if you'd like to see much more in-depth uh, videos on various topics on coin searching double dies repunched mint marks and uh, mint errors please look at some of the more videos on our channel we have a whole lot of them and a whole lot more on the way also go check out our website it's varietyerrors.com once again it is varietyerrors.com we have a lot of useful information on there dedicated to coin searchers and cherry pickers such as ourselves so go check that out while you're at it if you have not done so already please subscribe hit that like button and once again thank you for your view